Okay, welcome everybody to the, to the lesson number five of this uh, module. This is the final lesson of this module. And we will cover uh, maximum entropy uh, network ensemble. And in particular, we will have two parts. And in the first part, we will cover uh, block models. So we will continue our discussion on latent variables and, and uh, sorry, I'm trying to look here. Yes, so we will continue our discussion of latent variable and we will cover latent variable which are discrete. So uh, blocks that divides the, the node and classify the node in different parts. And, and then we will cover briefly uh, inference of this uh, community assignment using um, Bayesian model, models and inference models. And then in part two, instead, will be slightly different. We will just uh, focus on generalized network ensemble. And in particular, we will cover multiplex networks and simply shell complexes that have been attracting a lot of interest in these last years. And uh, the focus will be on maximum entropy ensemble always, but uh, the style of the presentation will be a little bit more general, more broad, a bit more like a seminar. So that is a little treat after all the technical insight that I hope you have learned in order to understand how you can use this insight to understand also more general structure. And in, in, in the web page, you will find also uh, material and slides covering directed and weighted networks, but we will not uh, discuss that today. So as always, I cover uh, the references. And in particular, I have um, uh, I've been covering this uh, book chapter by Tiago Pexoto, Bayesian Stochastic Block Modeling. And um, so uh, let me just try to go back. Oh no, I'm just going forward. Okay, so um, yes. So uh, this uh, Bayesian Stochastic Block Modeling by Tiago Pexoto, and in part B, we will cover um, the material in, in, in including uh, the material in my book, Multilayer Networks, and um, several uh, works that we have been doing it to get in my group in both simply shell complexes and multiplex networks. So let's start with the block model. So the block model is a class of model in which there are latent variables and um, these latent variables are discrete. So each node is assumed to be assigned to um, just uh, one uh, 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 latent variable, which classify the node. Of course, in network and in community structure, there are cases in which this latent variable might be multiple and the assignment of community for each node can be multiple, but this is not covered here. Here we assume that each node um, is classified into uh, some uh, block. So there are nodes with block one, node of block two, and there are set of non-overlapping nodes. And uh, this block assignment can come for, from metadata. So you might know uh, from data, which is the block that you are um, actually considering. If you are considering block associated to feature, known feature of the node, or uh, they can be latent variable. So they can be um, some classification you want to infer uh, given the network. And these block models are used when you want to uh, represent networks in which uh, maybe the node belonging to the same group have a different probability to be linked to each other uh, respect to node of different group. And this uh, can be uh, giving rise to different kinds of models. 
So for instance, one model which can be cast into the, the category of block models is also was introduced by Girvan and Newman as a benchmark and is called the uh, Girvan Newman benchmark and is formed by uh, four group of nodes in which um, node belonging to the same group have higher probability to be linked to each other respect to node of different group. So there are a few links connecting node of different groups respect to the density of links, um, the, the density, the probability of two node be linked to uh, node belonging to different group to be linked to each other is smaller than the probability that two nodes of the same group are linked to each other. An opposite behavior is also captured by the block model. So for instance, the extreme other behavior in which you have a block uh, bipartite network. So you can have two blocks and then you can say, well, the block um, among the node of the same class are forbidden and only the node uh, um, connecting node across the two blocks are allowed. Okay, so also this is a kind of extreme pattern in which instead the, um, uh, the, the, the block are uh, in some sense um, suppressing the links uh, within each block. So um, how can we, what, what is this, so this, this, uh, this block model? Well, we can have a, 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 canon, a canonical, a, a micro-canonical version of the block model. In the canonical ensemble, we might want to, we have a probability for each network given the block assignment. And we want, might want to construct, constrain in average uh, the number of links between node of block B and node of block B prime, okay? So we, um, we express this constraint in this way. And actually, if B is different from B prime, this is really the expected total number of links between nodes of different class. If instead B is equal to B prime, here we are counting twice i less than j and j less than i each link. So for b, uh, b equal to b prime, this constraint is twice the number of links inside each block. So this is a little subtlety that will come out then in, in the equation. So we fix this number in average over the ensemble in the canonical approach. Okay, so then of course we know from maximum entropy that uh, the probability of the graph given the block assignment is given by the Gibbs measure. It's an exponential random graph with this ensemble where lambda b and b prime uh, is are the Lagrangian multiplier fixing each of these constraints. Okay, so uh, now we might want to know uh, the marginal, of course, and uh, the marginal then the is, is reads like that. So the probability that I connects to J as this uh, logistic or Fermi function in which uh, we have here in the denominator e to the minus the Lagrangian multiplier associated to uh, the block of node i, the, the pair of block of node i and node j. And then here we have a term which is one if block i is different from block j and two if they, they are the same because of this factor that the constraint is defined in this, in this way. So uh, this Lagrangian multiplier then can be calculated given the constraint and is given by, by this, uh, this, uh, this ratio, or you know, it satisfies this other relation where P, B, B prime is the fraction of links that connect node uh, in, um, or, or this uh, in block B and in block B prime divided by 
the total possible number of links connecting node B and B prime. Okay. So note that when uh, B and um, when B and B prime are different, the total possible number of links that I might possibly draw between node of of um, class B and class B prime is the product of how many nodes I have in class B and how many nodes I have in class B prime, and if B is equal B prime, the number of possible links that I, twice the number of possible links that I can have between block node of block B and B is uh, N, N B choose two, okay? Uh, it, so, is, um, so the total possible number of link is N B choose two. And if I want to have twice the, the total number of possible links, I have N B, and b minus one, okay? But the meaning of pi b b prime is unchanged because um, it, it, here uh, for b different from b prime, this is the total number of links between node of class b and b prime. And if b is equal b prime, e will be twice the number of link between class B and B prime. So this ratio is always the fraction of link that I have among nodes belonging to this class respect to the maximal possible number of links that I can have in this, um, among this node. So if we want to prove this uh, relation, we uh, we can just uh, um, start from the Gibbs measure and try to express the quantity here in the exponential, so the Hamiltonian explicitly. So uh, here, this is the definition of what we have of the Hamiltonian. Then we invert the sum over i and j and the sum over um, um, classes B and B prime. And, um, and okay, we inverted in. So now uh, here we have sum over I less than J of A I J and the sum over J greater than I of the same thing. Okay. But I J, I, I, uh, the adjacency matrix is symmetric. So a i j is equal a j i, okay? So uh, I can write this as um, the sum over i less than j of a i j. And here I can invert the order of uh, j and i, and I have this expression. So what I'm left here when I do this sum is that uh, when, um, when i is different from j, either uh, when when b is different from b prime, sorry, either i is uh, b i is equal to b and b j is equal to b prime, or uh, b i is equal to b prime and b j is equal to b. So I have a term one, and the only Lagrangian multiplier that I need to consider is between b and b prime, essentially. And when instead B and B prime are the same, I will have a term, I will have twice the same term. So I have to put a delta BI, BJ. So uh, this is uh, sum over I less than J, IJ, one plus delta BI, BJ, lambda BI, BJ, essentially, where we have, we have used this convention that we indicate the Lagrange, we consider, we symmetrize the, these Lagrangian multipliers and we put lambda b, b prime is equal lambda b prime b. Okay, so this is, show this uh, relation. And then we can just insert this in the Hamiltonian. And we can calculate the partition function and here, uh, 
this exponential of uh, the sum for i less than j can be expressed as the product of this exponential, single exponential, and then doing the summation over each ij, we get one plus e to the minus lambda bi bj and this term, and this is the partition function. And then when we can consider the marginal, we find uh, what we want. So this is um, a straightforward calculation. If you have done all the calculations so far, so it's, it's, it's really uh, easy once you have uh, defined the Hamiltonian. Okay, so uh, now we need to impose the constraint. So we assume uh, B different from B prime, and we fix that the number of links uh, between node of class B and node of class B prime is equal to E bar B and B prime. And um, so we have this expression for, for the marginal probability of a link between node i and node j. And um, so uh, practically, if we insert this here in this sum, uh, we have that for, uh, we, we get that this marginal probability is uh, if uh, the, class, the class of i is b and the class of j is b prime is always the same and is given by this expression. And then we need to sum over how many nodes there are such that node i is in class b and node j is in class b prime. And this is this quantity. And we have to put this quantity equal e bar b b prime, from which we get this, this expression for, for the Lagrangian multiplier. That is the expression that we found. For b equal b prime, the calculation follows a similar procedure. So now um, we sum over all i and j, uh, the, all the links, uh, all the matrix element i, j, in which i belongs to b and b, j also belongs to b because b prime is equal to, to b. Uh, the constraint is the same as before, and here we have e bar b, b prime, but b prime is equal to b, and the marginal is equal to, to this expression. So now we have uh, a factor two because we are considering uh, b equal b prime. And when we consider this constraint, this marginal, when node i and node j belongs to the same community b is always the same. So uh, we need to consider this marginal and then we need to multiply by uh, the sum over i and j such that bi is equal to b and bj is equal also to b. And this is nb and b minus one, where this nb is the number of nodes uh, in, in, in the class b. And then we have this relation that we show. Okay, so it's just straightforward. Um, if you uh, think it's not clear enough, you just need to practically pr think about it and write it down on a paper, and you will see it will it will it will become clear. So, of course, there is also the microcanonical ensemble of of the block model, and is the one in which you enforce as a hard constraint to have exactly a given number of nodes within each community, each block, and among each block. And um, in this case, practically the, the distribution probability of, of, of a network given the block assignment is, uh, is constant over all the networks satisfying the R constraint. And the constant is equal to one over this partition function, which is just the number of graphs that you can construct with this constraint. And the number of graphs that you can construct in such a way that uh, you have E, B, B, B over two links among the nodes in class B, 
and E B B prime links among node of class B and B prime is just uh, the product of this binomial factor. And uh, one counts in how many ways you can put E B B prime links uh, among node of class B and B prime. So you need to choose E B B prime links among N B multiply N B prime possible links between the nodes of the two community. And here you have to choose E B B over two uh, ways uh, links among N B choose two links, possible links. Okay. So the entropy is just the logarithm of this number in this ensemble. And you can do a Stirling approximation for, for NB sufficiently large. And you will find that as long as the number of constraint is not extensive, so if the number of community, uh, this, the square of the number of community is less than N, so if the number of communities is much less than the square root of n, then this microcanonical and canonical ensemble are equivalent. Okay, so uh, here the constraints are for each b and b prime, so they go like the number of community to the square, right? So as long as the community are big enough and include a uh, large fraction of the node of the network, you, uh, you find this equivalence of the ensemble, much like in the random graph. There are some uh, variation of this block model, and one very useful variation to consider is the one in which you include this uh, block uh, assignment, block uh, constraint, constraint on the number of links among node of different blocks with a constraint on uh, the degree sequence, because the block model that I discussed, both the Girman and Newman or the bipartite have a rather homogeneous degree distribution, while we know that in many cases, the network could display kind of uh, heterogeneous degree distribution. So um, we might want to constrain both the degree, the expected degree sequence and expected total number of links. Sorry, here I wrote a distance D, but this is between, between block of um, class B and B prime. Here I, I use QI, but this should be B, B I and, and, and B. Um, so, um, so the Gibbs measure in this ensemble reads like that. So you have a constraint Lagrangian multiplier uh, with a single index, which constrained the, the, the average uh, degree of each node i, and a Lagrangian multiplier b b prime that constrain the block, the, the, the constraint of the block model. So how many links there are between block node of block b and b prime. And you can work out the marginal, which then describes the probability that I connects to J. And this will be, you know, depending on the Lagrangian multiplier associated to not I that fixed the spectral degree of not I, the Lagrangian multiplier associated to not J, and the Lagrangian multiplier associated to the fact that one, um, one block uh, is associated to bi and the other is associated to bj. So let's um, let's now discuss, uh, I just give you a brief introduction to a big field uh, and I will be following this chapter by Tiago Picciotto. Uh, I will discuss how, how to uh, conduct inference of this block structure, because in many cases, you might not know uh, uh, what is driving this non-homogeneous uh, distribution of links in the network. So you have in many data sets these communities. So the fact that 
some region of a network are more densely connected than other region. And um, this is found in, uh, in social network. For instance, this is a nice database of um, the social network in the book of Les Miserables, of the character of the book Les Miserables. Uh, this is a, instead is a biological network of uh, disease uh, where two diseases that are caused by the same genetic mutation are linked to each other. And this is uh, a very famous data set, which is called the Zachary Club, and we will talk about um, later. So in general, this is to show that these non-homogeneous uh, distribution of links in the networks and that tends to have region of the network that are more densely connected than other region is uh, ubiquitous in a large variety of data set. And in a, in a number of cases, you want in some sense to have a partition of the graph and a block assignment that assign to each node a single number that characterize its, its community. In many, in some cases, there might be um, cases in which one node might belong to many community at the same time, but we don't consider that at this point. So the Zachary Club is a beautiful example and is an, a kind of real data set uh, in we, on which a lot of community detection uh, algorithm are tested. And is a data set that uh, was collected by sociologists about you know, a group of people which were uh, exercising karate together. And there was a, 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 a leader, a master. Um, and while this data set was uh, collected and studied, the group split into two parts. There was some conflict and the group split into two parts. So there was uh, something really happening there. So you can claim that there is a ground truth of, of what uh, is um, the classification of the node because uh, each node choose one of the two group uh, to belong to afterwards. So and um, so it, this 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 network, has, although it's very small, and nowadays community detection can be run on network of million of nodes. But this data set is is very famous and is a constitute a very important benchmark to test a new algorithm. And it's so famous that there is a kind of uh, uh, the Zachary Karate Club Club, which is which has also a trophy, and the trophy is given uh, to each um, scientist, which at the conference is the first scientist who cites the Karate Club uh, um, uh, in, in, the, in the conference. And so this, this trophy go from, from end to end, and this is uh, me ending it to, to the awardee in, in uh, one of the last years. So in general, uh, there are different ways to characterize community structure in, um, in network and infer this community structure. For a lar very large data set, I mean, uh, since this is a very hard computational problem, practically uh, the, the most used method are greedy algorithm, including the Leuven, Infomat, which we, we do not uh, discuss here. Uh, but for medium and small size network, one can uh, do a very good job with inference and Bayesian modeling. And uh, here we discuss this, this approach briefly. So um, we have studied uh, the probability of a graph given the block assignment. And this is this uh, GIP measure that we have found with the block model, for instance, or some generalization of it. Um, but uh, we might 
in, when we do inference, we are interested to the posterior, posterior distribution. So the probability, the probability of the block assignment given the network. So I'm given the network and I want to know what is the probability of a given partition of the node into different groups. And um, this posterior distribution depends on, uh, on the uh, probability of the graph given the assignment and on what is called the prior distribution. So um, a distribution which encodes our prior beliefs uh, regarding the distribution of the community assignment. And typically you want this prior distribution to be quite agnostic. So to be um, such that it doesn't in introduce a bias into uh, the inference method. So uh, the posterior distribution that we have mentioned can be calculated using uh, the base rule. And uh, the, the posterior distribution is given by the probability of the graph given the block assignment multiplied by the prior divided by this probability of the network in all the possible model we are considering. And this is called also the, the evidence, but this P of G will not depend on, on the community assignment itself. So what we can do is to consider a maximum a posteriori estimator, which um, infer the block assignment by maximizing uh, the prior distribution essentially. So you find the block assignment, which maximize the prior distribution over all possible assignment. And um, when, when you do that, you are, uh, you know, the prior is given by this uh, base rule, but the, the evidence P of G is independent on the block assignment. So the prior distribution can be written as a ratio of two to the power minus uh, LG of B, which is also called the description length divided the evidence. And the description length is just given by minus the logarithm base two of the prior distribution. And it indicates uh, the number of bits needed to communicate the data in a chosen model. So, um, so this is very important because this description length not only includes uh, the likelihood of the, like, the likelihood of the graph given the, the community assignment, but also includes um, uh, information about the prior. So it might try to suppress uh, the probability of model which depend on too many uh, parameter, okay? So it, it avoids overfitting of the model. So uh, how can we choose this prior then? And um, here, of course, uh, uh, there, this is a, it's a choice of the modeler. And here I just uh, propose you a, a ways in which this can be done. So the prob probability of the block assignment could be a probability of the block assignment given that we know um, um, B, so the total number of non-anti block, then given the, 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 the number, the total number of non-anti block, we, we consider the probability of capital N, that is the distribution of number of nodes in each block P. And then we have the probability of the block assignment given the, mm, the, the set, the, the number of nodes in each block, the distribution of the number of nodes in each block. So uh, we can take, for instance, for a probability of having B block, one over N, something very agnostic on the number of blocks, 
for the probability of having uh, uh, a distribution n of nb nodes for each block, we can choose this, um, this probability, which is uniform over all distribution and B of nodes per block for beating empty blocks. And then for the probability of a, each block assignment, given the number of nodes in each block, we can just take uh, the, the, this, this, this distribution. So, um, so in this way, okay, so the, the choice of the prior is important. Of course, it, it is, uh, it is, uh, it should be a, 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 the choice of the modeler, which, which prior you want to choose. So this is a, just a, a proposal, a very uh, well thought proposal. Um, uh, but the, you know, the, the presence of this prior uh, penalize uh, model with too many parameters, so it tries to uh, avoid overfitting. And this is a case um, studied by, by Pixoto, in which he was considering a, a group uh, stochastic globe model for a network of American college football team, where you see this community, and then he's trying to to find to to minimize the description length in the original model, as if when we wants to find how many blocks it should divide the, the, the network into, how many community are there. And as a function of the number of block, it finds a, a minimum of the description length that is given by, by 10. And if it, it was, uh, randomizing the network, it would not find uh, any, any minimum of the description length. So this is an indication that this is a signature of the structure found in the network. So this concludes uh, this uh, discussion here. Of course, this is not all the story. So um, somehow this, um, uh, okay, no, sorry, I have another slide. So sometimes you don't want to do just the maximum a posteriori estimate or some, because it, it can be a very uh, com computationally art problem. It's, it can give to it often rise to NPR problems. So you might just want to do a Mon Markov chain Monte Carlo method and sample from the prior distribution. So you can do that by practically pro considering a, a Monte Carlo move, proposing a change in your block assignment, and then accepting it with the probability that is given by this, um, by this uh, formula. So this, as I mentioned, does not conclude uh, uh, the whole stories because uh, somehow uh, this uh, uh, minimizing the, the description length and optimizing this this prior uh, is, is, is it, it, it avoids overfitting, but it can uh, lead to uh, underfitting. So sometimes you want to do this hierarchical stock, uh, stochastic block models. Um, so practically uh, consider community at a different level of cost graining. And if you um, want to look at more descript detail for that, I point you to this uh, very nice um, chapter by Tiago Pexoto. So this concludes this, this first part of the lesson. And so uh, we have con considered block model, uh, which are maximum entropy model with discrete latent variable. And we have discussed uh, inference of, um, of community. So Bayesian inference of, of block structure. And uh, this concludes our uh, discussion of a network ensemble with latent variable that was started in a lesson four. And in the next session, it's a part instead, we will cover 
generalized network ensemble, so multiplex network and simply shared complexes. <laughs>